want to mention one thing. I'm starting a little mini series tonight on personal growth. And tonight's on, cha on change and pain and also on willingness to grow. And then also I'll be doing the God as they understand them next week and then followed by the serenity prayer. This whole entire series is a series I did on my CDs. So you can actually find the whole series, which are six CDs. You can find them on uh, Vince's Corner uh, down to the bottom where it says videos and stuff. And you'll actually see uh, personal growth and all five talks are there. You can check them out if you want to. Okay. All right, I'm gonna start off tonight by doing a reading from the language of letting go. And I picked the one for September 1st. It's on patience. Sometimes we get what we want right away. The other times we wonder if our desires will ever be fulfilled. We will be fulfilled in the best way possible and as quickly as possible, but some things take time. Sometimes we have lessons to learn first, lessons that prepare us so we can accept the good we deserve. Things are being worked out in us and in others. Blocks in us are being removed. A solid foundation is being laid. Be patient, relax, and trust. Let go, then let go some more. Good things are planned for us. We receive them at the first available moment. We'll have all of our heart longs for. Relax and trust. Today I will identify what I want and need, and I'll be willing to let go of it. I'll devote my energy to living my life today so I may master my lessons as quickly as possible. I will trust that what I want and what I need is coming to me. I will let go of my need to control the details. I want to do that reading tonight because in this series on personal growth, I've learned some very basic fundamental principles I want to talk about tonight. And as I really want to talk a lot about what I refer to as the compulsive personality and the addictive personality. I want to talk about the concept of how these two personalities have an effect on us in our growth process and how we then can move into the process of recovery. As most of us know, I shared this before, we come into this world in our birth through the process of struggle. And mothers know what I'm talking about. There is pain, there is struggle involved in the birth process. But once the child is born, then there's the joy and the celebration. Even at the end of life, we have a struggle. We go through a struggle at the end. Our body goes through a struggle. And yet it's hard to be able to say goodbye. We realize something very powerful when it comes to our growth process as human beings. And I find this really interesting because I shared this before with you, but really if you study psychology 101, they actually have a diagram of how life is supposed to be. You know, I don't know where they got it, but it's interesting. They simply say that the first 10 years of our life are the foundation years. The next three years are referred to as the years of confusion. And then comes the teenage years called the years of chaos or conflict. And then from conflict, we come into a period of time. We're supposed to be totally independent people. And then from there, we move into adulthood. Now, the ages I don't agree with, but basically the process I do. We go through a growth process. That growth process is never simple. It's never easy. It's a process we all have to go through. And though we notice you go to the gym, they have a sign up that says, no pain, no gain. Well, life is the exact same way. We have to go through struggles. We have to go through conflict. We have to go through different periods of life to come to our own awakening. And so what I want to do, I want to show you how this kind of connects because growth deep down inside is supposed to be physical, emotional, and spiritual. And physical growth a lot of times is basically, many of us have a lot of emphasis in that area of our life. But unfortunately in growing up as little children, coming into our family systems, we talked about family systems before, so many of us experience you know, issues of being deprived spiritually. 
And I'll try to remember for those that may be new, when I use the word spiritual, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about the concept of personal growth. The word spiritual and spirituality means to come to an awakening of my personal spirit, to come to a knowledge of myself as an individual. But unfortunately, when we're born, we enter into a dysfunctional world. And by the way, I don't care how long you stay in this world, the world by nature is dysfunctional. Life has forms of dysfunctionality. We have to be able to navigate that world. But if we grow up with foundations in our family systems, where we experience things such as fear, guilt, worry, shame, control. So as a result, then these elements basically strip away our sense of spirituality, a sense of who we are as a person. And then we learn how to be survivors and not thrivers and not people that live. And so literally many of us go through the rituals of life, go through different forms of dysfunctionality. And after a while, these behaviors become our normal. And so spiritually, if we're not growing, then it means we're staying stuck. Emotionally, we then begin to act out. And our emotions are all over the place. We don't know what to do with them. We have either go either one of two ways. We either stuff our emotions, bury them, put up smoke screens in ways in which we can hide and stay away from them, or we have a tendency to overreact and get ourselves into a lot of trouble and basically operate on that philosophy of his or her majesty, the baby. And we kind of throw tantrums and go through all kinds of changes. See, the bottom line is because I'm empty on the inside, because I'm lonely, because I feel rejection, I feel abandonment, I feel these things. I literally either shut myself down or I, look, I want constant, constant attention all the time. So I get caught up in these behavior characteristics. As a result, then physically, I don't really take care of myself. I try to put a good facade on on the outside. I may even, you know, lift weights and do things that look good on the outside, but the inside is totally empty. And I've learned over the years, when your inside is empty, eventually your outside's going to pay for it. Or many of us migrate towards forms of addiction, drugs, alcohol, food, gambling, sex. We can migrate towards all different forms of addiction, work, compulsive behavior, acting out, all kinds of ways in which you either get attention or basically we get ourselves into a lot of trouble. The only crazy part about this is after you're in this behavior for a long period of time, it becomes your normal. You become comfortable in it. That may sound strange. I might be in a lot of unmanageability, a lot of insanity, a lot of craziness, but guess what? I'm used to it. So now I'm able to function and survive even though I don't like where I am. So as a result then, the hardest part about life is going through this process. And I wanna kind of share this with you on a personal level because I realize now in growing up as a child, I never really had a sense of who I really was because my whole entire life was dictated to me from the outside, from my family systems and everything else and coming out of our old traditional Italian family, you know, they had to have a thing called delegation. So I got delegated. And so therefore, basically my life was planned for me and literally, not that I didn't do a good job, but we can attest to that. Because basically, I was able to run companies, I was able to do, set up programs, do all kinds of activities, but I was always busy, always active, always moving, always running, never standing still, never looking inside. It was my way, because basically, I don't know who I was internally, so every one of my concepts of self or identity became external, even in the priesthood. It literally was a time where I would rush, I would hide, I would run from all over the place, because I really wasn't ready to do that most powerful thing in life, to stand still, to look in the mirror, to have to look at myself, to have to deal with the real me. And this is the story of many of us 
coming out of dysfunctional backgrounds, coming out of different situations. And so as a result then, that then becomes our normal. That's why it's so hard sometimes when people are able to go from one transition into the second transition, and that's why it's painful, and that's why it's almost like a new birth, because you're actually transitioning from one lifestyle into a new lifestyle. Unfortunately, for many of us, it's easier to stay in the old, because the old is comfortable, even though it might be unmanageable. And so as a result, then many of us put ourselves in situations and then we feel like we're stuck there and we can't get out of there. So we end up blaming, we end up being frustrated, going through all kinds of changes. And as a result, then it pays off in negative ways. Now, recovery takes us to the other side. But here's the hardest part. Crossing that bridge into what I call the unknown is scary. It's almost like I have to cross over into a world I really don't know, I'm not comfortable with. And if I have all these fears, all these worries, all these anxieties, all these things, especially if I have a lot of shame, then I'm scared to go into that world. Now, here's the key. We have to understand this. I can't do it by myself. Now, many of us will try. I did. We, we can try to do it intellectually. That's a lot of fun, by the way, because then you think you're in control. And I always thought I was in control of insanity, even though I wasn't. But we can think a lot of things, organize a lot of things, and be, think we're in control of a lot of situations. But after a while, stuff kind of oozes out of us, comes out negatively. And I realize this today because... Going through that transition and going through that recovery thing takes time, takes patience, happens slowly, but it's also a struggle. Growth is always a struggle. In my own life, I realized the first 40 some years of my life were spent in that shell, were spent locked up, even though production wise, I could produce. I have found out so many times codependents, adult children of alcoholics, God, we are great. We can run companies, run businesses, do all kinds of things. And so we're busy, 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 busy. But we had it. we're scared to death to stand still. We're scared to death to smell the roses. We're scared to death just to be able to be, to be quiet, to go within, to look at the inside. That's one of the reasons why many times we keep running. It's funny sometimes how things work. You know, I got to tell a little bit of my own story because I remember in 1969, I was living in a parish with a priest that was a severe alcoholic. Most of you know that. And basically, a gentleman came to the door one day in 1969, and I was a young priest, and said it for me to go with him to a meeting my first exposure to a 12-step program. He took me to an Al-Anon meeting. And I, yeah, I liked the meeting, nice people. And right away, I basically got a little bit on my soap opera and I had to find out how this thing works. And so I was trying to organize everything. And I kept saying to them, now, just give me the formula to fix the pastor. And they kept telling me, very strange people kept telling me to work on me. I didn't need any work. See, I was all together. I had my act all together. But they kept telling me to work on me. But they're very persistent. You know, they really have this little problem where they're constantly persistent. They keep telling me the exact same thing. And then basically, of course, I wasn't ready to hear that because I was too busy wanting to fix everybody else but I was avoiding and running away from me. And the amazing part about it is, at least they did one good thing. They got me to get a transfer out of the parish. And I went to another parish where I got involved in an inner city parish and began to run around like a nut doing all kinds of stuff there, organizing all kinds of youth programs, leagues, all of them. God, it's unbelievable, some of the stuff I did. But the bottom line was, I was still running. 
ended up with a nervous breakdown, was in the hospital. And this strange doctor came up to me and said to me, he said, Father, he said, you're spiritually dead. You have no idea who you are. You have no sense of yourself at all. He said, you know, you're an empty shell. Well, I think that man went to the Al-Anon meeting because he was saying the same things they were saying. But the bottom line was, I had to keep hearing this over and over and over again because I was scared. I was kind of trapped in the fear. I was afraid to make changes. I was afraid to go through the struggle, that pain of change, that pain of new things. And believe me when I tell you, it took me a lot of years because basically even being around 12-step programs but not really doing my work because I was too scared to do my work. So I did my work. I have to really take a look at myself on the inside. Again, it was much easier, you know, in those days to be a two-stepper and run around and fix everybody. But the bottom line was I had this tremendous fear of crossing over into the unknown to have to make changes. And I thank God for the people who had the courage and the strength to stay with me to support me, to be part of my journey, to help me to go through the transition to go through the change into a new way of life. But the scary part about that was in that new way of life, I basically had to let go of something called control. It's almost like you had to step into the unknown as a codependent, that's scary as hell. And as a result then, literally it means I have to face things, I got to change things, I got to move forward. And for me, it was scary because I was living in a world, especially for 12 years in the seminary and 20 years in the priesthood, in a world that was very comfortable. Everything was taken care of for me. It was like being on, I don't know, you know, commercialized welfare. And as a result, then all of a sudden I had to stand on my own two feet. I had to learn how to become responsible how to learn how to make decisions, how to learn how to grow up. And please do me a favor, don't wait till you're in your 40s to grow up, but you know, sometimes we gotta do what we gotta do. You know, so the concept is, I'm grateful to the people that are able to do this even younger, to go through the transition, to go through the change, but sometimes we have to be able to really experience that craziness, that insanity, that unmanageability to come to our awakening. The old thing, you know this as well as I, I got to do it my way. And I find out I can't do it my way. I got to listen to somebody else and learn from them. And that's why it's important to be able to be around people that are going through their own transition. People like all of us here. That's why I love my family. And the beautiful part about it is we're all going through our own struggles, our own stuff. And yet so many times I have to be able to develop a new identity, a new way of life. I have to really go through a transition and go through a change. And, that, and I, I want to tell you, this is something that's really interesting because when I first got into the OA program, I met a very special man whom I didn't like, but a very special man. His name was Richard. And basically he would say some very nice things to me like he would read me the ninth step promises all the time. He would tell me all the things that will come to my life if I work this program. And he was very patient. So I read the book on patience tonight. He was very patient with me. He allowed me my journey, but he kept slowing me down, telling me to do a little bit at a time. Take your time, go slow, relax, take it easy. And he said, growth, is a slow, slow process. It's a learning process. It's a struggling process. But you have to allow yourself just to let it happen, but let it happen in God's time, not in our time. These were all new terms to me. But I realized he was really teaching me that if I take care of myself physically, and in my case, begin to eat healthy, change my lifestyle, but what's scary about that is once you take the embalming fluid out of you, then you begin something called feeling. You get in touch with your feelings. 
And I've learned over the years, feelings are neither, neither right nor wrong. They're just feelings. But those feelings start coming out. And feelings such as anger, frustration, jealousy, you know, self-pity, things that we go through in the course of life. Addicts know what I'm talking about because even when addicts put down drugs and alcohol, they go through what we call the dry drunks or the emotional highs as we call them, which means they get into their emotional system and their emotional system is out of whack. And all of a sudden now I have to go through this rearranging of my emotional system to begin to feel my feelings and get in touch with them. And I'm gonna tell you, that's scary. That's really scary. Because it means transition, it means change. It means opening up in new directions. It means being able to look at things through different eyes. And I'm gonna tell you something. I truly believe if you open yourself up and begin this process, get in touch with your feelings, you begin the process of getting in touch with your spirit. One of the greatest gifts I've been given in the course of my life, and that comes into my spiritual recovery. Today, I'm grateful to all those people who told me I was spiritually dead. I'm grateful to all those people who had the courage to be able to stay with me through all that. I'm beginning to realize today that there's so many gifts that we all have inside of ourselves. We've got to be able to go through the transition and go through the change and become more open. Be open to learn, be open to grow, be open to new things. We have to have that, willing, that willingness to change, that willingness to grow, that willingness never to be done. Please don't ever be done. Don't ever want to have it all together. Please. Just keep growing, keep learning, keep discovering, keep finding things out and try to keep an open mind and keep this process. This is part of what spirituality really is all about. I say this today because the 12 steps to me was one of the greatest spiritual gifts I ever received in my life. I have so much gratitude to the people back in the beginning who put this together. These 12 beautiful principles that teach me self-love, self-awareness, self-discovery, a beautiful sense of myself as a person. And they're so simple and they're so basic and they work. But you gotta work them. You gotta live by them. You gotta make them part of your life. It's not easy because you know, there's always, always gonna be a war inside of each and every one of us. It's the old against the new. There's always a part of us that wants to go back to that old, old behavior. Even today, I still go through this. I get myself to a point where I start getting over-involved. Loretta knows what I'm talking about. And as a result, then I have to be able to pull back. I have to be able to set more boundaries. It's a constant process of going through a new direction, a new change, a new struggle. I never thought my wildest dreams and Richard was right. He said, you'll experience things you're never going to experience before. Never in my life that I ever imagined I'd be going around giving lectures, doing, doing programs. I never thought in my wildest dreams, I'd be writing books. I'd be doing all the crazy, beautiful things I've been learning today. And I know now it's because of the grace of God and the grace of this program. And I realize more and more, you know, I'm realizing that so many of us hide everything. We're scared to look, go within. Because I really believe every person I've met on the face of this earth is a gifted and talented individual. You have so many gifts, but if you get stuck in fear, you get stuck in anger, you get stuck in frustration, if you get stuck in all these behaviors, you get stuck in shame, and literally it shuts you down, it closes you off. And they have to face that stuff and feel it and be in touch with it and deal with it. That's why I call this talk, Change and Pain because it's not easy to go through this transition, to go through this birth. It's no different than giving birth. You're going through a struggle, you're going through a new way of life. And it's, you have to have a sense of awe to look at the unknown and not knowing where it's going to take us. You know, we can look at the world we live in today. And the last time I checked, I checked out the window today. I was out in it today for a while. And it's still dysfunctional. So Carol, don't worry, it's still dysfunctional. You know that too. All of us do, even, even Jen knows it. But the, the bottom line is, it's going to be out there, be dysfunctional until the end of time. It was from the beginning, it'll be to the end. It's all part of the process. We're a bunch of crazy, insane human beings 
living in a crazy, insane world. And now we're actually people that are in recovery trying to navigate this world. And navigation is wonderful when you know what you're doing. And to me, the 12 steps, the program, the recovery process, the support from others, not doing it by ourselves, all this is part of our navigation. It gets us through things. I don't want to do it alone. It's too lonely. I need people in my life. I need you in my life. I need all of us. We all need one another. We're all part of one another. And we're all interconnected. We learn from each other. We have our own gifts. We have our own things. We have our own things we can experience. I had a great experience today. One of my interns who's learning to be a counselor sat down with me and gave me some really good constructive criticism today. And I, I just loved it. You know, the old me would have got very upset, but I really enjoyed it today. And I thanked her. I gave her a hug afterwards. I said, thank you so much for coming and talking to me about that and helping me to work through it, something else in the course of my life. See, I think that's, that's what it's all about. Because you can learn from people around you. I learned from my grandkids. They're great teachers. I learned from the young people I meet in the program. You know, their enthusiasm, the energy they have inside themselves. You know, they're still going through their struggles and going through their pain. But it's great to have them around. Because sometimes I think we get stuck. We get trapped. We have to realize the fact we have to learn from those who have gone before us and for those who are coming. We have to learn from all. We're even starting to adjust a little bit to the music of the day, this generation. I'm getting there a little bit. Don't worry. Well, I still go back to the 50s, but that's all right. That's me. But I, I love the concept of I'm learning to laugh more, to enjoy life more, to celebrate the people around me to be grateful. You know what's so beautiful about it? No one wants to go through this life alone. We need to be connected. We need to be part of one another. We need to learn from each other and grow from each other. And yes, there's going to be aggravation and there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs, there's going to be good times, there's going to be hurting times, there's going to be sad times. We're going to experience different situations that happen in life, we have to deal with them. We may watch people in our life leave us. We're gonna experience death, we're gonna experience birth, we're gonna experience all different aspects of life. That's the mosaic. That's what it's really all about. That's the adventure. But look in a mirror tonight. Look at your beauty and your specialness. Look at the unique individual that you are. And realize that every one of us is on a journey, but we're on it together. And no one's any better than anybody else. And we're going to have disappointments. Things won't work the way we want them to work. So what do we have to do? We have to learn those two spiritual words again. Acceptance and adjustment. Isn't that amazing? I look back now, and even in the past year, and what we're going through right now with things going on in a pandemic and everything else. And guess what? We all had to do a lot of adjusting and learning new things and new directions. And guess what? It's not a good, going to go back the way it was before. Nothing ever goes back to the way it was before. In fact, I don't want it to. I find it's neat. Now, I got a phone call from a good friend of mine who comes, comes on these lectures all the time, and I've known her for a long time, from California. You know, and she was, we had a great conversation today. I never would have had these connections with people from all different parts of the country. You know, Syracuse, different parts of areas. It's just amazing. Even in my meetings, when I go to them, we have people in our meetings from Maryland, from the Poconos. We have people from all different parts of the country. That's exciting to look at and hear different ways and different directions and go through all these things. That's the excitement of life. You know, I look back on gratitude for the gifts God has given me, the gift of my wife, the gift of my family, the gift of my grandkids. Oh, my God. The gift of even my grandson who just got engaged, the gift of my oldest grandson who's married. You know, I have more grandkids now, so it's fantastic. But I'm loving all this concept of life. Life is such a wonderful adventure, but you want to have people to adventure it with. That's what's so important to be able to experience them. And that's the beautiful part about life. 
Will there be pain involved in it? Yes. You're going to have struggle. You're going to have pain. You're going to have disappointments. You're going to have sadness. You know, I just love the fact that this big mosaic of feelings and things that go on inside of us. We're going to have days where we get a little jealous. Come on, we all do. You know, we have to have a little pity pot every once in a while. Get down on ourselves. Sometimes I wish my the grass is greener on the other side. You get on the other side, you find it's got to get cut too. So what the hell is the difference? It's all part of the process we have to go through. It's life. And so things are not always going to work the way you want them to work. I can, you know, for a long time, this worked for me. Well, guess what? Now you have to adjust to something new, to move in a new direction. Okay. Life will go on. But don't do it alone. We need interconnections. We need, above all, we need our connection to the higher power, our connection to the God of our understanding, to a higher presence. We need a connection to those who will help us and guide us through this whole process. You know, I really believe today is a powerful energy guiding us on this earth. I'm just open to it. And yet at the same time, there's also a negative energy that I want to be able to face. I have to face it also to be able to break away from it and to move forward. And so I guess what I'm saying tonight is the structure of change, the structure of pain, the structure of newness, the structure of crossing over into a new world is always scary. And yet at the same time, it's okay. You know, I so many times in working in rehabs, I've seen new, new people that really came in, you know, in the first couple of days they were there, it was like, you know, what am I doing in this very strange place? What's going on here? And about four, four or five, six days later, they come up to me and say, thank God I'm here. Thank God I'm here. That goes through the struggle. We all do. It's all part of it. I did. We all did. And yet we have to continuously begin to build that gift we have, our spirit, who we are on the inside. We're all God's spirit. That's why what I want to do next week, I want to spend a lecture on the God of my understanding. It's a, it's a lecture fundamentally on the 12 steps, on the spiritual foundation of the 12 steps. And then I want to kind of finish this little mini series talking about the serenity prayer, the entire serenity prayer. Now that prayer contains everything we need for our journey on this earth. Such a powerful prayer. And that's one of the reasons why I try to say it every day, at least twice a day anyway, because I know how important it is to stay connected to it. So on top of my prayer tonight, I just want to say a prayer of gratitude once again. Gratitude for the gift of life. Gratitude for the gift of struggle. Gratitude for the gift of, of newness. But above all, to ask God to give me the willingness to go through the process of change, the process of growth be able to face the unknown and try to release our fears and release those things in our life. So let us pray. God, I come before you as a family tonight. We all do. We come here and we say to you, thank you. Thank you, the God of our understanding. Thank the higher presence. We thank that you are part of our journey. Teach us never to be afraid to ask for your help, to ask for your guidance, to ask for your direction. We know that if we ask for your help, you will send teachers. You will send things into our life. You also send struggles into our life. For we are to grow and become stronger by facing our struggles, facing our fears, working through different changes we go through in the course of life. Thank you, God, for all the wonderful people that are part of our journey. But above all, thank you for those who have gone before us even those that we lost suddenly, those who may have died from addiction, we also thank them for their struggle. We thank them for being part of our journey on this earth. We learn lessons we hope to the best of our ability from all the lessons we're learning in life. Teach us to be open. Teach us to constantly have a sense of patience and a sense of trust. Everything in life takes time. Growth is a beautiful thing. And recovery is a slow, gradual, but beautiful process. 
So thank you, God, for the gift of recovery, for the gift of life, for the gift of our personhood. But above all, thank you for walking with us as we walk the journey of this earth. We pray and we ask this in your name each and every day. We ask this, amen. And now I'm going to ask if you just unmute yourself and Pat's going to lead us once again in the serenity prayer. Okay. She's our maestro. I'm your maestro, yeah. Okay. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. God's will, not mine, be done. 